Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are starting another series on Art of Defining Boundary Conditions in ComSol Multiphysics. Many times people do ask me how exactly we should define a boundary condition in a particular physics interface. Because there are a lot of nodes under a particular physics interface and people get confused which node to use to define a boundary condition which is prescribed in a research paper or which is suggested by your seniors or your supervisors. So I suggest the right approach to tackle this issue is to understand each and every bit of equations, different nodes which are given in ComSol, explore their equation and then use the right one. So before I start with ComSol multiphysics interface, uh, let me introduce you with three different types of three popular boundary conditions and which are known as Dirichlet boundary condition, Neumann boundary condition and Robin boundary condition. So Dirichlet condition basically means you have a constant value. So at particular when you solve a numerical problem, when you solve a physical problem numerically, you basically solve at a particular domain that is called the solution domain. And on certain grid points, you define the values and which are known as boundary conditions. So if you define a constant value at particular location of your solution space, that becomes your Dirichlet boundary condition. For example, this, this one, y0 equal to 5. That means uh, at x equal to 0, the value of y is 5. And this 5 is a constant value and that is why it is Dirichlet. So this is a two variable problem where you have two independent variables x and t and y, u is dependent on this x and t. So the value of u at a particular location x and a particular time t is equal to 0. So again this 0 is a constant value. So this is a Dirichlet boundary condition. So in Neumann boundary condition, uh, we actually define flux that means the derivatives. The derivatives has certain constant value or zero. For example, here dy dx at zero. That means say x equal to zero. The derivative of y with respect to x is also zero. So we are defining this flux that is dy dx or the gradient and that is equal to zero. So wherever we define a gradient on particular solution space, those are called Neumann boundary conditions. And in Robin boundary condition, we have mix of both. For example, this one, the boundary condition is alpha ux plus beta derivative of u equal to zero. So here this alpha ux, this is coming from the Dirichlet contribution and this derivative is coming from the Neumann contribution and mix of these two uh, is your Robin boundary condition. So we come across all these boundary condition Whenever we deal with physical problems that may be connected with your heat transfer problem, fluid flow problem, that might be your um, say wave equation or any other uh, physical problem that you are dealing with, you will be coming across these things and uh, we will now uh, go to ComSol interface to <coughs> tell you how exactly we define those. So before that, uh, another example, very specific to temperature I have given. So one Dirichlet condition is when we deal with some temperature uh, that is heat equation and we define somewhere temperature equals to constant. So that is your Dirichlet con condition. So physical significance with uh, respect to one particular example. So again, pertinent to heat equation solution, the Neumann boundary condition is the gradient of temperature is zero or the gradient of temperature is constant at particular location of the solution space. And in case of Robin boundary condition, example is suppose at particular surface, what you want to define, you want to define the amount of heat conducted is equal to the amount of heat convected to the atmosphere to define such a physical situation we use this kind of Robin boundary condition where you can see the gradient is there. So K times gradient that is the amount of heat conducted is equal to the amount of heat convective. So this right hand term which is the Dirichlet contribution, contribution is nothing but uh, uh, this heat transfer coefficient into delta T. 
there is a convective mode of heat transfer. So, these three examples will uh, tell you the significance uh, and it will help you to visualize when exactly which kind of boundary condition is needed. So, this very heat equation we will be tackling and we will start with the Dirichlet condition in ComSol. So, for that we go to model wizard and now we will take a 3D geometry. Let us take this heat transfer in solids. Uh, so, I double click it. Uh, so, this physics interface has been added and then I go to study. I would go for the time dependent study. So, I click on time dependent. So, let us wait. Yeah. So, the interface has come. Now we will define our geometry, say the geometry will be in centimeter. So we change the unit from meter to centimeter. So there is a drop down menu. I change the unit to centimeter. I simply take a rectangular block. So for that I have to right click here, choose the option block and say I want a block of height 10 centimeter say width around 4 centimeter and the depth around 2 centimeter so I click on build selected so this geometry is created now the idea is I want to keep the walls of this particular box at different temperature and due to having different temperatures at different walls I want to see how heat transfer is taking place and due to that heat transfer how the temperature distribution looks like in this uh, entire solution space. So, the solution space is nothing but this particular block and boundary condition means uh, we know some of the temperatures or some of the condition like this particular wall say okay when I go ahead I will just let you know. So, before doing it we have to define a material. So, I click on add material and then I choose a copper. This is a copper block. I look for copper. I choose this copper solid. So, this material is now copper. So, taking a material means it will take the required parameters like thermal conductivity, density and all other stuff uh, which will be needed to solve this heat transfer in solid equation. So, if I click the equation you can see this particular equation we are solving. This is heat transfer in solid. This convective term doesn't uh, important here because there is no flow. Only we are solving this is the unsteady term and this is the uh, divergence of heat flux uh, coming from this Q is coming from the Fourier's law of heat transfer. So now we will define this Dirichlet boundary condition. In order to define the Dirichlet condition, we have to right click on it and uh, here it will not be named as Dirichlet depending on the physics interface different names will be there. So in this series I will be talking about all those different nodes uh, starting from heat transfer physics interface, fluid flow physics interface and any other interface which we generally use for our research problem. So here the Dirichlet boundary condition in terms of temperature comes as temperature. So, we click on temperature. Once I click this node, it will allow me to selectively choose the uh, uh, I mean surface on which I want to define the temperature. Say at this particular wall, I want to define a higher temperature for example, 350 Kelvin. So, I define 350. Uh, so, it will be now 350. Suppose I want to define other temperature to the other walls. So again, I will right click and choose this temperature option, which is again a Dirichlet condition and say this particular wall and the bottom wall also say this is kept at room temperature. Now <coughs> I define this one, this two and if you see automatically the other conditions will be insulated. So, all the surfaces we need to define. So, the things which we have defined by you are taking temperature nodes are these two surfaces top and bottom and this surface the right one. 
other than these three surfaces uh, this region is defined as heat insulation which is automatically there by default but uh, although it is there uh, there is certain equation which is governing these conditions and that equation is here so thermal insulation means what that is the normal uh, heat flux would be zero that means no heat will be flown away from the surface so in a physical sense what is there practically there are insulation so if you have a have an ideal insulator it will not allow heat to pass through it and that is what is given here so whether you have chosen your condition or not but here it is automatically taken and you know from the Fourier's law q equal to minus k a dt dx so if you take a normal uh, i mean if you take a dot product with respect to the normal vector so uh, it will come the derivative of temperature is zero so this condition will be <coughs> your uh, 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 neumann boundary condition because it is not a fixed one so this particular one which we are solving although we have only taken dirichlet automatically some uh, boundary condition was there which is not dirichlet which was neumann boundary condition so now uh, we can just click on the compute button so it will take some time to simulate we are simulating time dependent for one second so after simulating we got this particular temperature profile as expected the right wall was at higher temperature so if I can click here the temperature 350 which was taken I can see 350 is coming so any other position if I click the temperature will be shown so lesser temperature 303 uh, this is 331 so we got the temperature profile of the entire block so our idea was to introduce you with the boundary condition this is the first video of the series where we just talked about Dirichlet condition and automated by default boundary conditions. So in the upcoming videos, we'll talk about all other nodes. So like here, if I right click, we can see thermal insulation, heat flux, symmetry, periodic condition, lumped system connector. What are those things exactly? So we'll come to know one by one. So this series will be interesting to you. I suggest you go through all the lecture notes all the videos and share the video as much as possible thank you